Church, uh, we've been on this series. How many of you uh, are enjoying this series? You asked for it, you know. And uh, several uh, weeks ago, uh, we asked you that, hey, what would you like us to preach about or you want to learn about? And uh, I would say when we got these responses, we were, we were like, man, we have a church that really wants to know God and wants to do right by the Lord, you know, and, um, and, and that makes us proud, really. We've, um, for several weeks, we've been uh, listening or hearing messages about um, how to hear from the Lord, the voice of God. Um, we talked about forgiveness last Sunday, which was so powerful. Uh, we spent a couple of weeks uh, talking about the end times. You know, how does that look like and what's our role in it as a church? Uh, so it's been amazing. And uh, I've thoroughly, you know, summertime for some folks, they just kind of take a little bit of a chill route. But you know what? We're going deeper because we love the word of God and we love God. Amen. So uh, today it's uh, I'm going to be talking about um, the person of the Holy Spirit. And uh, one of the core values here at Thrive Church is uh, just knowing the, the, the power, the presence, the person of the Holy Spirit. This, it's uh, uh, such a vital um, role that he plays in our lives. So I'm glad that whoever turned that in, that we want to, there were several that wanted to know about uh, the person or the, the Holy Spirit. And I'm glad that you guys did that. And it's our honor to do that. Now, uh, growing up as a child, uh, we spent a lot of uh, time uh, at my grandparents' house. My parents would be going to work, so they'll drop, off, uh, drop us off at my par- grandparents' house, and we would be just, uh, they, they practically raised us alongside with our parents. And, um, and they had this uh, little sign uh, on, on the wall, and, um, and I, I would be looking at the sign, and it read something like, I don't remember the exact word, but this is something I remember. It said something like, um, Holy Ghost, you are welcome in this place. And I'll be like, man, what are my grandparents talking about? Why would they want a ghost in their house? <laughs> and not realizing Holy Ghost, which is a Holy Spirit. In you know, old King James Version, it always refers as a Holy Ghost. So that, that was something that was, uh, you know, that kind of drew, drew to me. It's like, whoa, okay, that's interesting. Now, many Christians or even many people uh, find Holy Spirit mysterious. And uh, they, they think it's, you know, it's li- slightly unrelatable. They think that, oh, it's a, it's a force or it's a power that you can't reach out to or attain to. Um, but really, it's a whole another thing. It, uh, we'll hear more about it, but how the Holy Spirit plays a vital role in our life. And uh, who is he, really? Who is the Holy Spirit? And he is the third person of, of the Trinity it, and plays a key role in our lives. Now, oftentimes we hear about the Father, about the Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, people have a slightly familiar concept of that. They can relate to it. But Holy Spirit, they, sometimes they veer off the subject. They're like, nah, you know what, l- l- let me veer off that. But Holy Spirit s- plays such a vital role in our lives because Holy Spirit is what we relate to. We live our life right now with the help of the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's such an important subject for us as believers to know him in a very personal way. And, and I believe that if we know the Holy Spirit in that personal way, it's going to change the trajectory of our lives. The way we live, the way we think, the way our faith journey is, is knowing the role of the Holy Spirit. Now... Uh, I will uh, will explore a couple of realms uh, on how Holy Spirit d- distinctly worked in the Old Testament versus the New Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, we oftentimes f- uh, think that Holy Spirit came onto the screen on the day of the Pentecost. You know, uh, we typically have that idea that, oh, okay, in the book of Acts, when he came and the the the, the people that spoke in the tongues, that's when they got... Uh, introduced to the Holy Spirit, but no, 
We will go in the very beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and, uh, 1 and 2. It says, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of, uh, of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. We see in the very beginning that the Holy Spirit was with the Father and, and with the Son. Um, oftentimes, we, the role that they, all three of them work hand in hand in, in, a, in a harmony way. You see that some way you can kind of translate or understand in the way that the Father had the vision. And Jesus spoke the vision and the Holy Spirit carried out the vision. So they kind of worked in harmony then hand in hand. So we can really truly have to have that understanding the vital role Holy Spirit plays in our lives. Now today I really wanted to understand the person of the Holy Spirit. Now Pastor Hector will uh, bring uh, another message next Sunday about the power and the gifting of Holy Spirit, how it works in our life. But today I wanted to just kind of do an introduction on knowing the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, where was I? Okay, so in the Old Testament, the slightly different way the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit was placed as a special endowment of power um, uh, from God over certain people, over certain people to perform a particular task um, or, or an office or their role for a specific time. You know, it, it was on people for a specific time for, for special duties. Examples are such as King Saul. King Saul had a power of Holy Spirit uh, on him but as soon as he disobeyed God, the Spirit left him. The prophets uh, in the Old Testament, they had the endowment of the Holy Spirit on them to carry out the, the word of God to people. They, they were basically the voice of God to the people in the Old Testament. You can hear, uh, you can see the, the work of the Holy Spirit on people like Moses, like David. Even the kings that we read about, so many kings in the Old Testament, uh, on many occasions, they were endowed by the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower them to carry out their work. Because without the, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, they wouldn't be able to function in that way. Now, in the Old Testament, uh, there was a prophet that kind of gave a preview of the Holy Spirit for the New Testament. And it is found in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28 to 29. And it says, then after doing all of those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Now, just that word right there, that I will pour out my spirit on all people is just a profound statement right there. Not like Old Testament, it was only on selected people for a specific time. It's such a gift today, it's a privilege that the Holy Spirit is poured out on every being. Right? Further, it says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your, your young men will see visions. I see a lot of visions. In those... <laughs> I'm young. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. That's such a powerful thing, right? That not just only on men, the women, the women of God, the Holy Spirit has a power upon you as well. Now, in the New Testament, um, oftentimes when we need to know someone, um, it's, it's oftentimes it works best when we want to get to know someone new. Um, the first step is to be introduced by someone who already knows that person well. Now, who better person than Jesus himself to introduce the Holy Spirit to us, yeah. right? As we saw earlier that the Holy Spirit had, uh, was with um, with Jesus and for the, uh, God the Father from the very beginning. So Jesus is a perfect person that can come and introduce us to the Holy Spirit. So in the New Testament, um, I will read 
uh, several verses found in book of John chapter 14, 15, and 16. Now, we're not going to read the entire chapters here today, this morning. But I encourage you, if you go home um, this week, you know, try to read uh, chapters 14, 15, and 16. It will give you a great concept of the work of the Holy Spirit in de greater detail. Now, this uh, period right here when Jesus is coming up in the scene, it's only f uh, um, just few hours. I, some scholars say maybe, you know, 16, 18 hours uh, prior to him getting um, uh, arrested and finally to be crucified. So, you know what? Time was of, of an essence here. So, Jesus really gathered his disciples and it was important to him to give some instructions to his disciples right before his crucifixion. So this particular conversation did not take place public in a public setting. This conversation took place in a private setting with his close disciples. So in John chapter 14, he starts with verse 16 and 17. And he's talking to his disciples and introducing the Holy Spirit to them. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Another translation says uh, an advocate who will never leave you. Let that sink in, guys. I will give you another helper who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him. And doesn't recognize him. Now I'm emphasizing on him and he here. For a reason. But you know him. Because he lives with you. And now and later will be in you. Now here's the difference. In the Old Testament. We see that the Holy Spirit came upon someone. Or you know for a specific time. Like, like I stated early, earlier. But here. The whole dynamic is shifting here where Jesus is saying no longer it will be just a temporary presence to carry out a specific work for a, a specific time. Holy Spirit's going to come in you and going to live with you forever. What a profound gift church that Jesus for the first time is introducing the Holy Spirit to us in that manner that he is in you and indwells. The word indwells is in, uh, in many translations, it indwells within you. Now, the, the word indwells in Greek, it's um, translated that uh, it, it has a permanent residence in you. It has a pre permanent residence in you. So the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm yours and you are mine. It's saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, Jessica, you are mine and I am yours. Right? Ricardo is saying, I am yours and you are mine. He's indwelling within us. And I, as I was reading this and I, I dug deeper into that and I was like, Jesus, what better gift you could have given us? He knew that he was departing the apostles and, and he was leaving us. But he didn't, he didn't want to leave us as an orphan. He didn't want us to be, do life alone and lonely. He wanted to make sure that whatever we will face, there's someone with us. And that someone, no powerful Spirit of God lives inside of us and resides in us. And that was the game changer right there. Where Jesus is introducing the Holy Spirit. Now, if you've noticed as I was emphasizing the, on, on all the he and hymns. The Bible never ever refers to Holy Spirit as it. It's not an object. It's not an it. It always refers to Holy Spirit as him. Or he. All right? The church, this is a statement I wanted to make. If you don't see him as a person, then you will never develop a personal relationship with him. So we need to see Holy Spirit as a person. As soon as we grasp that concept of him as a person, 
we will start developing personal relationship with him. When I uh, uh, first started dating Sonia 20 years ago, uh, right? No, 25 years ago, almost 25 years ago. Sorry. We've been married 20 years ago. Yes. Let me get that right. Come on. Um, she's not going to feed me <laughs> if I get that wrong. <laughs> so when I came to United States uh, back in 1997, um, uh, we got introduced. You know, she was uh, my cousin's best friend. So that's how we came to get to know each other. So we went to high school together. We're kind of high school sweetheart. I could kind of say that. But we started dating after high school because I was a nerd. I, I was like, hey, high school, I'm studying. And, you know, so we started, uh, you know, dating. And uh, so I knew her as, as my cousin's friend. But I just didn't know her, you know, as her personalities or anything like that. But when we started seeing each other, I started getting to know, know her. You know, her, um, you know, uh, her funny sides. You know, one time we were driving and uh, she was, uh, this is like just only two or three instances we were going out. And she took a sip on a, on a Coke, on a Coca-Cola. And she burped loud. <laughs> and I looked at her like, whoa. That sound came out of her, <laughs> you know. So I was like, man, okay. So it took five years for me to kind of figure, figure her out, you know, <laughs> before I said, hey, I'm going to put that ring on her finger. But, but that's how it is, you know. You don't, you know, Holy Spirit's not moving in you until we, you know, he's in you now it's our duty and our, uh, you know, our privilege to get to know his personality as well, how he is. Because if we don't get to know each other in that, uh, in that deeper, intimate way, you know, uh, how can you do life together, right? How can you do life together without that? So Jesus kind of cont uh, uh, continues to introduce uh, the Holy Spirit to his disciples. And I'm going to read a few scriptures. And it's going to be thrown up on the screen there. And uh, I'm going to stay to the, my uh, iPad. Because it throws me off to go back and forth. So uh, I apologize in advance. But uh, these are some powerful scriptures. Where Jesus is in continuing to introduce the Holy Spirit to his disciples. John chapter 14, 25 to 26. He says, I am telling you these things now that I'm with you. I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the Helper as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Now, we will park on this scripture a little bit later on. But continuing to John chapter 15, 26, it says, But I will send you the Helper, the Spirit of Truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. The Holy Spirit is making that connection. Holy Spirit is the one that is making connect, uh, us connected to Jesus himself. Amen. John chapter 16 verse 7. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because, I don't, uh, because if I don't, the helper won't come. If I do go away, if I do go away, then I will send him to you. Now, the word uh, helper uh, appears uh, five times in the Bible. And we've read that here uh, four times the helper appears in these verses that we've just read. The word helper in uh, Greek translated, it's, uh, it's paraclete. Paraclete is basically... Uh, pa para means alongside and clit means um, to come. So paraclete basically is to come alongside. Wow. So the Holy Spirit is coming alongside us in this life journey that we're in. I remember when I turned uh, 18, um, it, it was kind of uh, interesting uh, time of my life. I would say I was turned 18 
My uh, dad wasn't here uh, in this country, so um, he was back in Fiji Islands, where we're from, and because of immigration purposes, he wasn't uh, with us. So um, three or four years had gone by where he wasn't with us, and I, I just graduated from high school. I was trying to figure out who I am. I knew the Lord from... Uh, I have amazing parents that introduced uh, us to the Lord, and uh, we grew up uh, in a Christian home. But it was just a difficult uh, time in my life where I was just trying to figure things, like any 18-year-old would. You know, they're trying to figure out their career, um, uh, who to date, you know, and, uh, and just about their future. You know, who do I belong to? Who am I? You know, so there were a lot of... Uh, and. And it was my birthday, April 16th, um, and I just turned 18, and I worked at Burger King, and I just came back from work, I came home, and it was my birthday, and there was no party or no birthday that was uh, planned on that day. So it was a difficult day for me. I was like, okay, I'm, I just turned, in, uh, turned 18 today. I worked um, right after school. I'm going home. My, my mom's at work. You know, uh, not going home to a birthday cake or celebration or anything. And I was all these challenges I was kind of facing during that time. So uh, we rented a small home and I went outside on my birthday. Uh, there was a little patio there and uh, with a chair. So I uh, sat there for a little bit uh, by just by myself. And. As I was thinking about those, and I was pondering on my life, and just sitting quietly there, you know, it was such a reminder right there and then as I was contemplating on things. And all of a sudden, I just felt a warmth in my heart that there is someone in me, that the Spirit of God was with me just right there and then. And he just started just praying blessing he just started blessing me. And he, he just started telling me who you are. Aaron, I know you by your name. Even though there is no one around you here to celebrate you, I am with you right now. You have bright future. I know you, my son. And I just felt, you know, just the warmth presence from the Lord, just the joy of the Lord right there and then. And I, w I would say, um, I didn't share this in the first service. And, um, and I thought about like sharing a personal uh, story to me. And it, it just reminded me, all of a sudden, Holy Spirit just reminded me uh, of this moment. I never think about this. You know, I, I just turned 18 that day. And Holy Spirit just kind of reminded me, I'm in you. I'm with you. I'm paraclete. I'm alongside with you with this journey that you have, Aaron. I love you, God. I love your presence, Lord Jesus. Now, there's other uh, translations of this word paraclete or helper. Holy Spirit in, uh, in other uh, translations also tells us that he's an advocate. He, he represents us. He's our counselor. He, some translations, he's, he's our comforter. He comforted me that day. He's our encourager. He's also our teacher. He teaches us during those times. Now, some may say, uh, some may, uh, so uh, my question is now, what distinguishes a person? What defines a person? Now, some may say uh, that it's a, um, it's a living thing. It has life. Now, a tree has a life, right? It's a living thing. But a person has a personality. A person has a personality. That's what makes a person a unique being, that he or she has a soul, right? Uh, w when we have a soul, we, we have a mind. We have our will. We have our thoughts, our emotions, um, I was reminded, uh, Sonia uh, was watching this, um, uh, uh, yeah, this movie, 
uh, animation movie, Inside Out. I was, a, I'm not a more of an animation movie type of guy, but uh, there's a movie that just came out, Inside Out, right? <laughs> Have you seen? There's two. Yeah, so she was watching number one at home. So, and I'm looking at this like there's all sorts of figure, character. There's a person in there that's joy. There's a sad in there. And I'm like, wow, this, is, this person, this young, uh, young gal, you know, she's in San Francisco somewhere. And, uh, you know, she's battling these emotions inside her. You know what? It reminded me of, as I was preparing this, that the Holy Spirit also has emotions. And I'll uh, go over these three things that will kind of remind us on, on his personality, his being. So the first one, the, the person of the Holy Spirit has a mind. Now, how, do, how can you, you might ask, Pastor Aaron, how can you prove that? Now, let's say Isaiah chapter 55, 8 to 9 says, my thoughts... Are nothing like your thoughts. Man, I'm glad my thoughts aren't like your thoughts. Jesus, your thoughts are much higher, God. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Ooh. For just as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The Holy Spirit has his mind. He has his thoughts, right? This verse is pretty convincing that the Holy Spirit has a mind, right? Because mind have thoughts. It reminded me of this girl from in, in, inside out. He knows all the truth, right? He knows all the truth as we saw earlier. And he leads us all into truth as well. If you... Uh, facing a time or you're going through a season that you're confused. You're not, you don't know what steps to make in your life right now. Let me remind you, he knows all the truth and he's going to lead you into truth. He's not, he, the Holy Spirit doesn't bring confusion. He's very clear. When he speaks, you will feel uh, peace, right? You'll feel clear. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. Right? He's all-knowing. He, he knows it all. Second, the, the person of the Holy Spirit has a will. He does. God has given us all free will. Well, the Holy Spirit also that indwells within us has a will as well. Uh, we can see an example how, how he um, works on his will here in the uh, book of Acts chapter 16, verse 6. It says, next... Paul and Silas traveled through the area of uh, Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented, some translation says, forbidden them from preaching the word in, in the province of Asia at that time. So another translation says forbidden, which in Greek word means to exert one's will. How do we know? How do we know the will of God in our life? We see clearly that the Holy Spirit has a will, and He prevented Paul and Silas, or He forbidden, forbade them from preaching there. So He has a will. Now, how do we know the will of God in our lives? Now, Pastor Hector, a couple of weeks ago, uh, talked about hearing the voice of God in our lives. Now, I'm going to have a two approach here, which um, God's will consists in two realms. The two, two realms, basically uh, the general will of God and the specific will of God. So the general will of God comes from the word of God. Yeah. Now, the word of God is infallible. It's alive. It's living. And he will, the word of God will never direct us in a wrong path or wrong direction. Right? So uh, it provides us with a clear moral and behavioral guides for all of our lives right so you know like uh, uh, in the bible you know we have the commandments you know it the word of god will always tell to honor our spouses honor the lord honor our parents do not commit sin do not 
commit adultery, things like that. And it applies to all of us, right? The word of God applies in general. General word of God applies to each one of us. And we can go to the Bible and read from the Bible. And it applies to everyone sitting in this place right here today. Now, the second way is, uh, actually, let me go to John chapter 16, 12 to 13. Jesus is telling them, there is so much more I want to tell you. There's so much more I, that I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truths. And he will not speak on his own, but will tell you, that, uh, will tell you what she, he has heard. And he will tell you about the future. Now, this speaks on the specific will of God for our lives now the specific will of god is specific it's custom made tailored made for us and god will speak specifically if there's something he wants to speak to it, it will speak to sonia there's a specific will of god in in your life for you right it, it will have a specific will of god for you jessica right it, it works in a specific the voice of god works in a specific way but the general will of god speaks from our from the word of god does it make sense so here we we clearly see that before the holy spirit came um uh, two thousand year, uh, years ago and started speaking to us and ministering to us you know the whole generations they would go uh, you know they would need or they would rely on one person to deliver the word. We see in, in the Old Testament where, you know, uh, even the, the, the children of God, the, the Israelites, when they were in the wilderness, they relied on Moses to give them direction. They relied on Moses to, to give them specific direction in the Old Testament. That's not the case here today. The Holy Spirit... God's voice through Holy Spirit can speak to you directly. Yes. Now, we, we do have teachers, we have pastors that delivers the word of God. But the specific will of God in your life comes through Holy Spirit. Because he is your friend. He's our advocate. He's our helper. He's our counselor. So he's going to come and deliver that specific word in your life for you. What an amazing concept. He wants to speak to us. I don't think we appreciate what an incredible privilege that is, that he wants to speak to us. Uh, earlier in the first service, one of the brothers was telling us, and he said, hey, I've been spending uh, time just going up into the mountains. And, uh, you know, and he's saying, I'm just spending more time with the Lord. I'm hearing so clearly from from him you know sometimes we do have to take ourselves from distraction the noise of life and go and pursue god amen and he he will speak to you amen the third the person of the holy spirit has emotions i know the new um generation they say emo i think that's, that's emo right yeah nicole she knows she always corrects me, like, hey, Pastor Aaron, that's not how you say it. <laughs> now, let's look at the emotions of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's very clearly defined in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. How many of you have heard the juicy fruits of the Holy Spirit? This is right where it is. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, yes. joy, yes. peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness these are the emotions of the holy spirit if we can only tap into that emotion of the holy spirit right we will have joy in our uh, in our lives we will have peace in our lives amen, amen. now another emotion that uh, the holy spirit also have uh, i wanted to direct his, uh, your attention to is ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 and he says, do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit. Another translation says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by the way you live. 
Remember, he has identified you as his own. Again, he has identified you as his own. We belong to him. Guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. What a gift. Amen. That he has identified as his own. Now, can we grieve the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. As I was preparing this message this week, I, I was thinking, and this, this scripture, this verse really hit me. And, and I, was, I, I immediately stopped and I said, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit, if I have grieved you. We do that. I, th th this message speaks to me more as I deliver it than to you. And it, it really said, uh, you know, oftentimes what do we do? Whether it's pride, unforgiveness. When we choose those, those things in our lives, we grieve the spirit. And I immediately said, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit, to grieve, grieve you. Again, I wanted to, as I stated earlier in the very beginning, Holy Spirit is a person. That's why, we, uh, that's why he feels grief when we disobey him. We can't grieve a tree, right? But we sure can grieve someone that, that has love for us. He loves us. Now, I wanted to share a, a, a small a story, just an illustration to just kind of uh, speak on the importance of knowing the Holy Spirit and Really, my goal and my prayer is that we walk, we don't go home without realizing the, the importance of knowing the person of the Holy Spirit. And if I can ask the Holy, uh, I did that first service too. If I can ask the worship team uh, to join me here, <laughs> speaking of Holy Spirit. Now, how many of you have uh, seen this series called This Is Us? I think, yeah. So... This is as um, I just started watching it, and uh, it, it's a I, I like it. I mean, it's kind of slow, but you know, I'm more of like, hey, give me drama, give me you know the, those uh, CIA CIA type of things. But this one's kind of unique to my taste. But I I started kind of loving it, and uh, this is uh, I'm gonna share just a little bit of a, a story about. Uh, uh, it's not a. Um, uh, spoiler alert, because this, ha this series came several years ago. So this uh, uh, the story is about this uh, main characters are Jack and Rebecca, uh, this couple that uh, were expecting triplets. Um, man, that's, that's uh, triplets right there. They, <laughs> but in, uh, uh, in the course of, uh, because of some complications, uh, Rebecca, uh, during the delivery, she lost one of the child. And so they were really expecting to bring three babies home. So Jack was just really, um, uh, really impacted by the loss of this. He, he told the doctors, I, I built three cribs at home. I want to t take three uh, children home. But when he was delivered that, this, mes uh, uh, this message that they've lost one child, he was really impacted by that. But... Uh, right there and then, a fire a fireman brought a baby that was just left there at the fire station um, uh, 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 by by his father, and uh, the fireman just brought this baby uh, here at the hospital. And um, so, as Jack was kind of looking at the babies, the fireman was right next to him, and he said, "Which one's yours?" I'm like, "Those are mine too," and I just brought this child. Uh, from the fire station and Jack immediately had a thought well I wanted to take three babies home I'm going to take three babies home today the long story short they ended up taking uh, uh, all three babies home and uh, they they named the, uh, the one that they adopted his name was Randall and Randall growing up he knew he was adopted and but he always felt that he was misplaced he always had to prove himself he had to do excel in uh, academics in, in every area of his life just to prove that he belonged and he wanted to know his parents his birth parents biological parents well long story short he became a very successful person 
and uh, he hired someone to look into that and he found his dad his name was William and and he went knocked on the door uh, of his father William's home and he entered and he sat with him and he said why did you leave me why did you leave me all my life I've been looking for you and his he said man son I had difficulties I um, I was in drugs your mom left me so I had no choice to leave you there well um, what Randall discovered that his father um, was sick he had cancer and he only had few months to live and he was so impacted by that because all his life he was looking for his biological father and once he found him he's sick and he did everything in his power he went through several doctors um, experimental drugs to buy more time and he couldn't he tried to get to know him in a uh, in a uh, personal way uh, his dad was a musician a singer and Randall tried to play music and he was horrible at it but you could literally see the pain and that Randall had to know his father why do I share this story from 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 a series that is produced Holy Spirit lives in us and we just go through life not trying to explore who he is as a person we don't get to know him his personality that's why I spend a little bit of a time to get to know his personality today my prayer is that we walk out of here knowing that we have the Spirit of God Father Spirit that lives within us church let's not waste let's not let one more minute one more moment go by not knowing him my prayer is that we will get to know the Holy Spirit in a personal way he's our friend he's our father in heaven the eight years that I went through here in the United States without my dad being here with us not for a moment I ever felt that I didn't have my father with me because my heavenly father the Holy Spirit was always always with me and I am so blessed that father in heaven has given us this gift that resides in us he dwells in us the church as we get up on our feet at this time as we worship the Lord with this last song my prayer is that as we sing this song I love this song it says not for a minute I think it's a minute or a moment not for a minute he has forsaken us that he is with us he is in this place so as we sing this song my prayer is that we reflect on his personality that he is in us 